Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to talk with you in this afternoon about the uh, drawdown of soil legacy phosphorus. And uh, as you saw in the previous presentation, when we manage uh, manures based on, 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 on the nitrogen uh, requirements, sometimes we have the accumulation of phosphorus. And uh, uh, this uh, work that I will present right now is uh, trying to see how much time we need to decrease the phosphorus if you have this previous accumulation of phosphorus in the soil. And so this is the, the presentation. This is a, a, this is a, a study that we, we had uh, with different people from different universities and we had Amy uh, Schauber and uh, Nicole Fiorlino and uh, Diana Osmond and also a grad student from uh, one of these universities. And so let's get started with my slides. Okay, the when we think about accumulation of uh, phosphorus or fertilization, we have kind of this trend that uh, over the time, if you apply more than the plant can export, we have the accumulation of phosphorus uh, as soil available phosphorus, and you can track this accumulation using the soil test reports. Uh, we have many different concepts uh, for legacy phosphorus, and you can find different concepts in the literature. But here I'm considering uh, legacy phosphorus, all that phosphorus that we apply in the soil, we see in the soil test report. And so this is what we are considering here. And so in this um, in this chart, in this cartoon, you can see that uh, uh, when we have our successive fertilizations, uh, we are accumulating phosphorus in the soil if our application is higher than the plant exports. And over the years, we can see that uh, the amount of phosphorus accumulated in the soil will be uh, at a high value. Uh, well, this is something that we uh, are facing in North Carolina, and uh, this is some data from North Carolina from 2005, and you can see some counties uh, that uh, we have uh, high phosphorus uh, available in the soil, and if you compare with some more um, new results from 2020 from uh, Stephanie Kulesa, you can see that these uh, regions with high phosphorus are spreading uh, over the, uh, the state. And when we consider in general the samples that we analyze for recommending fertilizers in North Carolina, uh, we have most of our uh, soils or our fields, we don't have a recommendation of phosphorus and, uh, for these fields, for example, for grain, uh, corn, and soybean, 85% of uh, the samples that are submitted to any CDA soil testing lab, we don't, uh, we would not need to apply phosphorus because the amount of phosphorus is above the critical level. And so uh, when we are in these situations with a very high phosphorus, we, uh, we can think about what would be the alternatives to reduce this phosphorus. And the, the, the first thing would be to draw down this phosphorus. What is the drawdown? It's just to keep growing plants, exporting phosphorus without applying uh, fertilizers. And so we would be in this situation where every year we crop the soil again with a new uh, crop season and we have exports and we expect that the, the phosphorus will decrease in the soil over time. And the question that we have uh, in this uh, conversation is how much time we need to decrease the phosphorus in these high phosphorus fields. And so we have some data available uh, uh, in, in the literature, and I brought two papers here, two studies, one from North Carolina and another from Maryland. And uh, it's it's scary because it, it we need a lot of time to reduce phosphorus because the exports of phosphorus by plant uh, is not that big. And so, but what we saw when you compare these two studies in North Carolina, in North Carolina, they use the drawdown uh, uh, regime uh, or management during 15 years uh, growing corn and soybeans. And you can see that it's 
is not fast in the decrease of phosphorus. Of course, it depends on the soil. It uh, depends on the starting uh, amount of phosphorus that we have in the soil, but it is not easy to decrease. And the drawdown factor that we have in this uh, trial was between 3 and 5% per year, the decrease. When you compare with the, the, this other study in Maryland, also with 15 years, and uh, here there is a, a haylage field, uh, also they have about 3 to 5% of decrease, yearly decrease in the phosphorus when they stop to apply phosphorus. And so this was the motivation for this study. Okay, it seems that these two different situations, different crop rotations, we have similar patterns in terms of phosphorus drawdown. And uh, we decided to try to grab papers from the, the, the literature and see if uh, they have similar patterns. And so we decided to do a literature review and try to uh, to get all these papers uh, working with a drawdown it means that no application of phosphorus and we keep uh, uh, cropping our fields. And we decide to, uh, to get papers that we had at least four years of drawdown in these studies. And we focus on four different soil testing methods, papers that were looking at the soil using Malik-1, Malik-3, Bray, or Olsen. And so we were able to have 27 publications, but when we look at the, this number of years that we went for drawdown and also the types of, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, an ad soil analysis, we were able to get only 14 publications of 56 drawdown sites uh, or plots where we could use in this analysis. And uh, we can see here the distribution. Most of the, the these uh, publications and the studies were in the US, but we had some from Canada and two from Ireland and France. So what we did, we got these uh, different publications and we extract the data from the uh, tables and graphs. And so we use a, 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 a online tool, web plotted uh, digitizer, and we could retrieve all the numbers, uh, rebuild the numbers from the graphs. And we were able to get the information uh, to rebuild the information about these 56 uh, different fields of drawdown. And you can see here all the fields that we were able to use in our analysis. Uh, we also collect the, the metadata information about the soil test method. The, we did the classification of the initial soil test phosphorus, what level we started in these different fields, and we used decision trees to separate these uh, 56 uh, fields in groups that are more likely or more similar, and we were able, by using decision tree analysis, to separate the, in this way. We consider fields together, uh, that start from 0 to 25 milligrams of phosphorus per kilo, 26 to 50, 51 to 100, 100 uh, to 150, 150 to 250. We also consider the crop rotation, grain, double cropped grain, haylage, and, and pasture. The soil texture, we separate all fields by soil texture in clay, loam, and sandy. And we were not able to separate fields by crop yield, phosphorus exports, and other soil parameters because we didn't have this information in all those papers. And so meta-analysis, we need to work with the information that we have available. And unfortunately, we didn't have in all of them. So uh, we calculate the drawdown rate. It means how much PPMs we decrease every year in all these fields. And this was the type of information that we use in our analysis. And we did a, the, our first analysis. What is the most important factor to, when we group these different fields? Is more important the initial phosphorus availability? It means soils that is started with a very high phosphorus or What's the important uh, when we look at these different fields? The phosphorus methods would be the best way to separate them, like Melk-1, Melk-3, Olsen, Bray, or would be the crop rotation or the soil texture, the four type of information that we were able to do. 
And so we work with uh, sim simulations. We use bootstrap forest of decision trees and we separate these 56 um, fields. Uh, we did 1000 simulations for each year. And what we saw is that uh, for more than 83% of the time, the most important factor to separate these fields were the initial phosphorus. And so the method uh, was responsible by 12% of the variation, the crop rotation only 3%, and the texture only 1%. And so the initial phosphorus is the really thing that we can consider when we try to separate these fields in uh, homogeneous groups in terms of drawdown. And so as we have the, our target, this is the, the, the initial phosphorus, um, the most important factor, we did, again, uh, bootstrapping, uh, resampling. We did 5,000 simulations for each group of these five initial, uh, the five classes of initial phosphorus availability. And we got information about the average of these 5,000 simulations and the, the, the lower uh, critical interval and the, the, the upper critical confidence, uh, confidence interval for this, um, this data and uh, the results, all the results that we have is just one graph for all of this, and this is the graph. And uh, in this graph, you can see that if you start in, the, in that group that we have, the initial phosphorus between 150 to 250, this is the way that we expect the drawdown of these sites. And this is the confidence interval that we have for each of these years. If you start with, uh, with a phosphorus between 100 and 150, regardless of the method that you are using for soil uh, analysis, this is the way that we expect the drawdown over the years. And you can see for the five different classes, and they are actually pretty similar in terms of the shape of the curve. Uh, when we separate these in, in each five years for the, the, the very high phosphorus soils, we expect that uh, the drawdown will be in the first five years about eight milligrams per kilo per year, and it drops to 7.8 uh, after, uh, after five years, from five to 10, and from 10 to 15 years. If you get the second group of soils, it starts with a pretty fast drawdown, 8.2 is pretty similar to the other factor, but uh, after five years, it, it drops to five uh, milligrams per kilo per year, per kilo of soil per year. If you get the next group, it starts to 4.6 in the first five years, and after we drop to 3 ppms. If you get the next group, we start with 3 ppms, and after five years, we drop to 2 ppms per year. And if you get those soils that start with low phosphorus, we expect 1 ppm uh, per year in the drawdown. Uh, in the first five years of drawdown and after it's below um, 1 ppm. Uh, when we get all the 15 years and uh, what we can have in terms of the average drawdown factor for soils starting with very high phosphorus, we expect 7.8 uh, ppms or milligrams per kilo per year. And uh, if you have a very low phosphorus soil below 25, uh, the drawdown will be uh, less than 1 ppm per year in the average of 15 years. And the time to reduce 50% of the phosphorus will uh, range from 8 to 15 years to reduce 50% of the initial phosphorus that we have in the field. And so the conclusions of this study, of course, it's based on a limited, limited number of uh, uh, observations, 56 fields, and uh, with different variations, they are, they are from 14 different publications. And so uh, we need to be aware that this is just a prediction based on, the, uh, on this data set that we have. Uh, but what we could get from this study is that the initial phosphorus availability is the most important factor to consider uh, to predict the, the drawdown factor for these soils. Uh, also, the 
the, in the first 15 years of drawdown, the drawdown factors will be between 0.9 and 7.8 milligrams per kilo per year, and it will depend on uh, how uh, rich in phosphorus is your soil when you start. Uh, and uh, we expect for these different situations to reduce about 50% of the phosphorus in uh, between 8 to 15 years of drawdown. It means that it's a long time to reduce a little bit of the phosphorus that we have accumulated in those soils. So this is the, the information that I, I wanted to share with you. This paper was submitted to the Soil Science Society American Journal, and we hope that will be available uh, with all the other data, uh, supporting data that we have uh, later this year. So thank you very much.